Greetings and welcome once again to the 51st International Eucharistic Congress, Cebu, Philippines. This is Eucharist, the face of mercy, and I am Bernard Factor Caniaberal saying Mabuhay! And good day to all of you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. I'm Angelique Lazo Mayuga. Good morning, everyone. This is Father Lorenzo Ruggiero. It's a warm, sunny day. It's another yes. beautiful day. We're on our sixth day. Mm -hmm. And how will, how's the weather up there and down there, weather girl? Actually, you know, I'm floating above you, the clouds. You, you're floating and above the clouds. this has been the result of everything that's happened so far, yes. especially yesterday. Especially All yesterday. All the talks were just so powerful and, and really hit straight to the heart. You know? Yes, yes. Um, and then plus the fact that the music also, I think, helped mm -hmm. a bit, didn't it? And don't forget, and don't forget. No, that I actually <laughs> enjoyed singing yesterday. <laughs> I just wanted you to, to remember that. I, I, you know, I, I, I recall also that last night you have your cultural uh, singing at, uh, at, at the, the museum, Rizal Museum. Rizal Museum. Very Museum. beautiful hall yes. with great acoustics. And yes. I'm happy for everyone who was able to attend last yes. night. Thank That's you. That's one thing good about this uh, mm -hmm. Congress because it's uh, totally packaged. This there are mm. talks, there are interactions and cultural events mm. and more uh, of these cultural events coming up That's right. so, in the next few days. So this experience uh, hits you in many levels, right, Father? Yes. Uh, spiritual? Uh, we, we have seen a general mobilization of the whole city mm -hmm. all around uh, uh, Cebu. Cebu. Yes. We, we've seen processions. Actually, last night I was also blessed by uh, being able to Listen. attend the concert and uh, uh, while going there, I saw the procession of the um, Visita oh, Iglesia, which yes. is a, a very typical Filipino tradition right. uh, by which people go from church to church. They visit seven churches and uh, there was a river of people mm -hmm. along the streets uh, uh, visiting Jesus in the Eucharist in the various locations allotted uh, for this celebration. So it's been a festive um, motive, a festive atmosphere mm -hmm. all around the city, not just in the pavilion. The whole of Cebu right. is invaded with this Eucharistic joy. Yes, those are the things that happened yesterday, but now we have another uh, guest with yes, us, Angelique. Course. We're very pleased to present to you. He is actually a member of Couples for Christ, but aside from that, he is also a board member or considered an elder, although he doesn't look that old to me. <laughs> We have with us Attorney Arnel Santos. Magandang araw. Good, good morning. Day. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Yes. Okay. Maybe for those of our uh, <laughs> viewers who are not familiar with Couples for Christ, what is CFC? Well, Couples for Christ is a family renewal ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, it is now uh, mm -hmm. all over the world, and it's in all the provinces in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But we came here not as Couples for Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, we came here as representatives of respective dioceses mm -hmm. and uh, it is very good that uh, the term here the term used here is not delegates mm -hmm. but pilgrims all because right. we were all pilgrims here mm -hmm. that's why you have any expectations and right now we're on the sixth day are this your expectations been uh, answered or uh? well as a lay person I was actually expecting that I would not be able to understand the proceedings okay. but surprisingly and by God's grace somehow we could understand especially with in the fellowship with the brothers and sisters here and the priest they are very kind enough to explain to us sometimes during discussion uh, the things that has been uh, the things that have been said very good and how has it impacted you as a person and your family as well yes uh, the definition of the eucharist as not a reward for a person but a spiritual nourishment for the weak that was a very powerful statement mm -hmm. because uh, we used to look at the Eucharist and commune as something that uh, only the exclusive few could uh, be able to avail. But now this time it is really welcoming, it is really Catholic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps also uh, you, you will be able to bring this uh, a message to uh, the Couples for Christ uh, group. Yes, Father, in fact we did during the parish uh, encounter activity. Yes. Uh, just two days ago, it was very much spirit-filled because the spirituality here in the IEC pavilion was immediately downloaded to the parish level. Oh. 
and the realization to all the members uh, to, to most the, of the members it was a particular local parish okay uh, Jetsemani parish in Mandawe City uh, mm -hmm. brother Bernard and it was really surprising because I understood that to be able to download the spirituality being taught here we should do this together not as individuals mm -hmm. that the clergy should be there the religious should be there mm -hmm. and the lay persons should be there and then the community should be welcoming I want Very to ask good. attorney Arne Arnell how, on, on a, a personal basis what are the lessons and what are the things that you're going to bring back home back home to your family back home to your parish and back home to the CSC? on a personal level I would think that it was the recognition that I am a sinner the confession was very beautiful to think that 15,000 of us have been given the, the chance to confess uh, during the proceedings it was very beautiful and I would always remember the advice of the priest confessor confessor for me to confess monthly for me to pray with my wife daily and for me to ask others how I could best serve them That's very, beautiful. very good to hear that confession is very important to all of us and th that's your member of your family uh, yes that's my dad and uh, he, that's and your I, family and yeah that's my family two children right or is, that, yes. is that your wife or is that your mm -hmm. mother <laughs> sorry so you are encouraging mm -hmm. couples especially young people to go to confession at least monthly yeah? yes. if they can do that yes uh, well to start with uh, just open their hearts all right and make themselves available for that particular encounter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then God would work through them uh, uh, to start with with that mm -hmm. right. I want to ask Father Lorenzo Father there were a lot of um, confession box not really a booth right but uh, what was your observation people were a little hesitant at first but once they started to come up more people went um, how is it I believe basically everyone um, received um, the forgiveness of sins yesterday as you said at the beginning there was a bit of hesitation but then once they saw that uh, the booth was open and the mercy of God was being dispensed uh, yes everyone wanted to receive uh, confession and a forgiveness of sins and this is something common also in our parishes uh, I've noticed when I sit down in the confessional box people wait for someone to come in and when the first person comes then a long line will form because basically and this is a task of priests uh, when you sit down to dispense to dispense the mercy of God people want to receive the mercy of God but sometimes because of our busy schedule different activities we ministers have no time All right. um, to actually hear confession and people long for this and I, I, I want to say also something regarding the the very important choice of placing confession not at the first day not at the last mm -hmm. but uh, sort of in the middle of this spiritual journey we are having this has a reason and uh, it is a sort of response to all those and I believe all of us uh, fall into this category who feel what is the reason for me to go to church if I keep on doing repeating the same sense over and over, over again. again sometimes we told ourselves uh, this sort of uh, thought and it is precisely because we do repeat our sins our weakness does not abandon us but much more the grace of God that mm. does not abandon us that we need constantly as we journey through our prayer mm -hmm. through the Eucharist to receive also confession I journey I receive strength I am weak I fall I ask forgiveness and I rise again so this is a a reason for hope for all of us you know uh, some people leave the church precisely because at the end they get discouraged yes they get discouraged yeah. and say look I go to mass and then I, I, promise go God, I promise God not to do that anymore ah. and but I did it again so yes. what's the use of it mm. the use of it is that the more you fall the, the more, more you see the mercy of God and God is yes. always there yes wow, true but attorney Santos I'd be interested because this is our first time to have attended this, this kind of Congress. Mm -hmm. But for those who are not in the know at all about this Congress, 
with a beautiful theme at that, Christ in you, our hope of the glory. How would you encap encap encapsulate this and tell this to the world or to other people who, are not, who haven't heard of this Congress at all? Uh, for, for the last few days, Brother Bernard, I've been doing notes and posting them on Facebook. Okay. And then as much as possible, I foresee that uh, organizations would have to echo this All right. in their local parishes or in their organizations. Uh, mm -hmm. Even just some bits of the, the talks. Okay, that's okay. very good. All right, we'll continue in a while with uh, Arnel. In the meantime, let's take a look at what happened yesterday. Uh, first off, we have some video footage of the Visita Iglesia in seven churches, okay? So um, this was where uh, the pilgrims were given an opportunity to visit the churches. The way we do this every time there is Holy Week. What day does this fall on, Father Lorenzo? Uh, usually, Iglesia, Visita Iglesia is on a Thursday. Visita Iglesia, yes. Uh, it's usually on a Thursday. The visitation Thursday. of churches. But this is a tradition that uh, goes mm -hmm. back to St. Philippe and Mary mm -hmm. in, in Rome because uh, it was a time in which piety was not uh, so flourishing. Mm -hmm. So he decided to bring the Romans around the churches to remind them that Jesus was present in the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. And it was such a success that uh, it spread very quickly throughout Europe to Spain. And I guess uh, that tradition arrived through the Spaniards also to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So um, from one church, they were able to visit another to complete seven. Is there yes. a reason why it has to be seven churches? Um, I don't recall any particular reason for the, the number seven, but uh, yes, once you complete the whole pilgrimage, it's a sort of uh, a spiritual journey. It's like, it's a sort of uh, walked rosary in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you can see, despite the traffic, people um, walked, And right? the elderly walking at that. Also, huh? yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, aside from the Visita Iglesia, we also, had Youth Day catechesis with Reverend uh, uh, Bishop uh, Robert Barron, no? most, most Reverend uh, Robert Barron, who is again uh, from the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, Los Angeles. one of the auxiliary yes. bishops in uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And of course, the youth is also one of his favorite uh, sectors, right? Right, and I guess mm -hmm. the youth had a blast with him mm -hmm. yesterday with his catechesis, and they've been waiting for this. And so we missed them yesterday here at the pavilion because yeah. they attended mm -hmm. most of them mm -hmm. at the catechesis of uh, Most Reverend uh, Bishop Robert uh, E. Baron oh. Didi. Yes, okay. There was also an overnight vigil uh, of Youth Day. This was uh, with the testimony of the uh, Paul Ponce oh, yes. and his family. That and we met these kids off yes. the air uh, in our studio. They're really I, cute, I, I aren't also they? had a wonderful time with them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. This is the Youth Day um, gathering at the Hoops Auditorium here in Cebu. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them. Look, look at that. Who I guess like. What age does youth refer to, Father? From when what age youth. to what age is youth considered um. youth? Because <laughs> in Tagalog, there's maga youth, which is means it's older people. <laughs> they, they say uh, at least for the World Youth Days, uh -huh. uh, it is 14 to 40. 40. So 14 to 40. That would be the age bracket. Mm. Yes. I'm still part of it. Then. <laughs> still part of it. <laughs> it's last year. <laughs> it's my last yes. year, yeah. And then. Okay, there's a bishop very charismatic Barron. bishop. We were there. Oh, what were your impressions about yeah. that? Yes, yesterday? I was there uh, yesterday at the yes, uh, at the youth uh, meets uh, Bishop Baron. How mm -hmm. was it? Very, very well yeah, received. Trifying. Very well received, and the message was very simple right. for the youth to be able to identify their grief and claim it, and then for them to look for ways to share it, and then for them to be able to really thank God for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's wonderful. Very simple, no? Identify your gift, share it, and... And then you're, you're going to find joy in and sharing. And you'll find joy in yes, sharing. And, uh, okay. We also have the visit of the papal legate, Cardinal Bo, mm -hmm. to Barangay Pasil mm -hmm. and uh, Don Bosco Youth Center. Yes. And that's around 4 p.m. in the mm -hmm. afternoon uh, yesterday. I remember Father Joel Kamaya, who is with the STB. Oh, look at that. Um, because uh, this is the Don Bosco Youth the, Center dancing on the street of young children yeah. Yeah. just I'm to sure welcome the cardinal cardinal bow must have been ex so excited about that yeah. um, 
these children, they live around this center. Some of them go there for meals. Right. And when they do, they are able to receive formation. And then, then they go back to their homes. Mm -hmm. The Don Bosco Tuloy sa Don Bosco Center in okay. Metro Manila, Metro the one Manila. in, uh, is this Alabang or, or Muntinlupa? In this area, um, the children are able yeah, the to, children they well. live there already. Yes. Yeah. And then the one in Makati, these are street children who are not quite sure they want to live there. So at night, they join. In the morning, they, they leave again. But at least there's a safe place for them to sleep in. And there's some warm, hot food for them to eat. This, so this is the, mm -hmm. the counterpart here in Cebu. Yes. Okay, uh, the Cardinal has a very tight schedule, actually. Mm -hmm. So as much as we would like to have him in the program, we couldn't catch him because of the busy schedule yes. lined up for him. Mm -hmm. And look at this. This is how we really uh, welcome uh, people, especially the likes of Cardinal Bo. And the children are so excited to see and uh, have a selfie with him. Yes. <laughs> it's always the case. No? That's true. Right. Beautiful. Okay. You're right. So that's the busy schedule yes. of uh, Cardinal Bo yesterday. And now mm -hmm. we move on to our present. Right. Day, is it day six already? Day right? six, right. Day so six. Uh, in a little while, we will have the morning uh, prayer. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's, uh, that's the regular thing that would happen mm -hmm. by uh, our very own Most Reverend Reynaldo Evangelista, the Bishop of Imos, Imos mm -hmm. and then catechesis. We don't have Mass here mm -hmm. uh, today because it will be held at the Cebu Capitol Building mm -hmm. in the afternoon. And there is a procession today, isn't there, Father Lorenzo? Yeah. There will be a city long procession, so we will proceed from here all the way down to, to the city, city Hall, and there we will have uh, the Mass. I am not sure if today all churches, all parishes in the metro are invited to participate, because at the beginning oh. of the Congress, uh, Archbishop Palma, the Bishop of Cebu, asked all parish priests not to celebrate Mass on Sunday afternoon so that everyone could mm -hmm. gather for the opening mass and probably it will be the same tonight and we expect mm -hmm. a large crowd and festive yeah. crowd. I think event. they're closing the streets there. They are closing traffic. all the streets at this end to yes. the And we hope to bring the activities, that kind mm -hmm. of activities, live into your living homes wherever right. you are in the world. Especially those, even those in the city who are unable yes. to go, you are most in, uh, oh. invited to watch us. Okay. I'm excited about that. I am too. <laughs> Okay, we're going to say thank you to Attorney Arnel. Thank Marami you very Salama. much. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, and uh, good luck to uh, you, all your activities and keep praying for us and yes. for everybody. Yes, and keep praying for all of us too. As we would always say, the family that prays together stays, stays, stays together. together. And a world that prayer is a, is a world, world at, at peace. peace. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 mga bata dahil mataas ang matrikula. Hirap ng buhay. Ang mahal, mahal ng bilhin. Hindi ito mataas ang sahod. <laughs> ang hirap-hirap nga ng buhay. Dagdag pirisyo ko itong traffic na to. Eto, sawa ng Diyos, sa karaos pa rin. Kahit paano. Please be seated for the whole meeting. Ani, kamusta pag-aaral mo? Okay lang po. Inaayos mo ba? Opo. Okay. Iwasan mo muna yung uh, barkada. Pag-aaral mo nang unahin. Okay. Kau, Jay, kamusta pag-aaral mo? Okay lang po. Inaayos mo ba? Opo. Okay. Gusto ko makatapos kayo ng pag-aaral. Kahit mahirap.
ang katawan ni Kristo. Amen. Welcome back to our special program, Eucharist, the Face of Mercy. And uh, joining us in our set this morning is Father Francis Lucas. He is the president of Catholic Media Network Corporation, or CMN. Mabuhay, Father Francis. You, Father Francis, and welcome. Uh, mapagpalang araw sa lahat yes. na naririto. Yeah, especially those uh, watching us Achyo online, manonood. feed in the ay, international ay, broadcast. Mm -hmm. A blessed uh, day to all, to all of us. Yes. Okay. You know, we've mm -hmm. known each other since our bewang, our, our oh, midsection is still 28. Okay. <laughs> but now it's 48 <laughs> or 38. <laughs> 36 only. 36 only. <laughs> Catholic Media Network, for those who are not familiar with that, what is it? Uh, the, network. The Catholic Media Network is the only community-based network in the Philippines of radio and small television stations. And its the strategy as community-based is inspired by the church All from right. building communities. One body, one nation, one spirit, one Lord. So it's all that, but it has to be community. community. And we're spread from Abra in mm -hmm. the north to Hulo and Tawi Tawi in the south. Mm -hmm. So about how big is this network we are in, now, in terms of numbers? We started in 1969 with 11 radio stations. Now we are 54. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the year, we'll be 55. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in two years' time, we'll be 70. Mm -hmm. Wow! There's, there's still a lot of bishops who wants uh, communication in radio stations. Mm -hmm. But we are not just radio. We have gone beyond radio. Like television? We go to cable mm -hmm. because we, we cannot afford our own TV stations in each diocese. So cable. Mm -hmm. It's too expensive. Yes. So you go to cable. Mm -hmm. You go use streaming. You mm -hmm. go via satellite. Mm -hmm. So we have a hub station in Manila, but that goes through the satellite. Mm -hmm. And like this IEC, mm -hmm. we would like to allow everybody to participate. Mm -hmm via satellite and connectivity. The term we're using is connectivity to the periphery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Father, there's a central station or a central Cent studio. We call it central feed. Central, central feed, feed that is sent out to all the participating yes. uh, networks yes. or, or stations. Yes. But they also have their local programming that will mm -hmm. uh, suit the the culture, no? the environment. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right, like, Angelique, mm -hmm. because the Philippines has so many languages, mm -hmm. and that's the way we do it. You know, we we use mm -hmm. this uh, distribution channel using the satellite feed. Mm -hmm. And when we do this, there are two ways. There's a national program mm -hmm. in the morning only mm -hmm. for almost two hours. Mm -hmm. We also produce from the national feed different programs that they can pick up. Mm -hmm. But 80% of all the programming is local because it's community based. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's not community-based, all the programs will be coming from the center. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. we bring the center to the periphery, the periphery to the center. And in so doing, we promote everybody as one church. That is the objective right. of this kind yes. of uh, technology. But how competitive is this uh, as regards to the secular networks around us? Well, at the moment, <laughs> many of our stations are number one. Wow. In the communities? Yeah, yeah. You know, for example, uh, I'll give an example. In Batangas. Yes, yes. That's very near Manila. That's Father right? Tony Dolor. Yeah, uh, he's also here. And um, we're number one for many years. That's Spirit in FM? Spirit yes. FM. Yes. So the, the, the scope or the area that, that, that it reaches is within Batangas, within the diocese? No, so does it no, go no, no. That? Many Manila stations penetrate the area, mm. and yet we're number one. Wow, 
That's our, good to hear. Our How can you explain station? that, Father? It's, it's a matter of management and programming. Mm -hmm. Strategy. Yes, how you do that. Mm -hmm. You have to, to show that, um, to, sh to, to provide images of God. Yes. Is you it don't also have to possible, be lousy. Father, <laughs> is it also possible that there really is a need, uh, a hunger among the audience for some things that are also spiritual? Because we get a lot of the uh, entertainment, the you know, normal things, but this is a little deeper from the normal thing. The way I see it, the secret is how do you produce images that can communicate, that mm -hmm. will have rapport, mm -hmm. that has connectivity. If, for example, in the uh, our station in Bayumbong, Leva Vizcaya, Leva, yes. it's also number one. How's Abra, Marla Ruiz? Abra, well, you know, that's far, far away. Yeah. <laughs> far, far away. But mountains. you know, we, we, are, we are also number one in that area, All right. in Abra. Uh, Father, election time is very near. Yeah. Will the, the church be using this also to at least tell them about the... We have been using that. Mm -hmm. All right. In fact, like this whole week, I have a lot of texts which they sent me, mm -hmm. uh, which really touch my heart. Coming from Lamitan in Basilan, oh. coming from all over the Philippines, mm -hmm. being inspired just by radio, telling us, you know, I'm sick, I'm desperate. Mm -hmm. But when I heard about what's happening in IEC, I cried and cried and cried. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. From somebody from, from Laguna uh, texted and said, now I want to serve the church and attend all these conferences. Mm -hmm. That's because the coverage, of Father, of your This is the coverage huh? of, uh, of Catholic Media Network. That's so cool. you see, on the left side, all our Spirit FM, the best. Mm -hmm. We call it Radio. Spirit, see that? Yes. Oh. Uh, and, and many of our stations are number one. And then on, the right on the right side, side are our AM stations, mm -hmm. which we call Veritas, Radio Totoo. Radio Totoo. Yes. Because, you know, you have to brand yourself and have a, a, a mm -hmm. same name to be able to have impact. Correct, because when yes. you say the the word of truth, mm -hmm. that's veritas, radio totoo in Tagalog. In Tagalog. Mm -hmm. While you have the spirit FM, because the spirit of God, the spirit of the human person. Mm -hmm. Father, to operate, to run a station, very expensive. How do you handle funding and uh, strategies about the money? If uh, you have preferential option for the poor, mm -hmm. and you try to be the poor church, you have also to strategize like the poor. All right. Make the best of what little you have. Like we are now on US streaming. Mm. We are also in the cable. Mm. We are also on broadcast using mm. transmitters. Yes. And we have also the satellite feed. So, All you know, right. there are many choices that you can do. Yes. Platforms. Eh? Different platforms just for everybody who, who needs that platform. To propagate the good news. Propagating the news, the thoughts, the images. Uh -huh. So mm. one of our secrets also is partnership. Because for example, um, the Catholic Media Network has become global technically. Global? Yes. But we have also become global partnership-wise, EWTN. Oh, yes. good. And we'd like to thank all the partners, especially EWTN, and all those who support EWTN and us as the Catholic media in the world. Mm -hmm. So this is how we, we live. Speaking of partnerships and the news, you know how it, it, it is uh, the political season now. Yes. Although here in the IEC, we hardly hear it because, you know, it's a good break from the noise. Um, what about politicians who are running for office? Do you get that kind of, uh, well, not really pressure, but, you know, um, sort of like they want to be part of your programming? How are you able to <laughs> this say is, yes or no to that? <laughs> this is uh, sometimes very funny. During election days, mm -hmm. our radio stations, which quote unquote, we built stations in areas where angels dare not tread. <laughs> Just like the song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For you know, angels never tread. But, but, that uh, but during election, uh -huh. you know, nobody would like to build a station. Suddenly. They have rest of money here. <laughs> yes. So these are missionary radios. Right. Uh, in so doing, we are so surprised that during election time, wow, all the politicians go to our <laughs> to our station, you like know. Oh time. my gosh. <laughs> so I said, you see, we are important. But yes. maybe we are not moneyed. Yes. Yes. So it's all the service for the church yes. because of the vision of uh, being one. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this IEC, all the Catholic institutions yes. in media 
we came together for this yes. to spread the good news all over the country all over the world yes. of course we have our own expertise like social media yes. television yes. and with a partnership also with the uh, EWTN mm -hmm. So you've set up your, your equipment and facilities uh, since before day one and up to the last day. And uh, in Manila, our hub, yeah. we get all the signals and have our own broadcasts mm -hmm. in Real all time? the languages in the Philippines. In of, oh. Ilocano, Cebuano, Bicolano, Kinaraya, uh -oh. Ilongo. Yes. You know, in, so in we have this, you, you have in, this real in real time. So we have here 10 priests from the different dioceses giving reflections about what they feel and see here mm -hmm. based on their own yeah. diocesan experiences. You attach that. That's very beautiful. That's very beautiful yes. to hear. Huh? I was wondering if they needed an Italian correspondent who knows Filipino. We have Father, Father Lorenzo. Father Lorenzo will be here to <laughs> translate it in Italian. Yes. <laughs> um, because he invites me, I can do so. <laughs> That's right. I'll try to. We're hearing the opening song the already. Song, yes. <laughs> you know, every day I hear this, it's become more and more beautiful because yeah. all the, the, the lessons that we're yes. learning are coming into the whole picture. So, Father Frank, Frank thank you so much thank for you joining so much. us today. So, we thank the Lord and that we are able to bring the good news to the periphery in the Philippines to the Catholic I Media like Network. That. How is that again, Father? Uh, uh, periphery? Periphery. Connectivity to the periphery. Activity. And the periphery the connected to the centers also. Beautiful. So and that's that one God. day we shall all go to eternity. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So yes, we please go. stand by for our morning prayer. And that would be led by His Eminence, uh, uh, Reynaldo Evangelista, Bishop of Imos, Cavite. He's wonderful. He's my bishop. And he's my friend since he was in the seminary. Yes. Would you believe? I could have been a... Oh, no. Yeah, somebody already <laughs> called you father. He's just brother. They mistake okay. me for one uh, always. All right. And then also another beautiful sharing, <laughs> a catechesis of uh, His Eminent John Cardinal Onayekan on the dialogue with the poor and the suffering. Well, we will have more for you within the day, so please stay tuned uh, for all of our interesting talks and our um, other events within the International Eucharistic Congress. So once again, again, this has been your uh, host, uh, Bernard Factor, Kenny Abelal. I'm Angelique Lazo Mayuga. And we leave you with this word from the Philippines, Mabuhay! Mabuhay.